All right, welcome back to class. And today, as promised, I'm going to give my lecture on Ragnarok, uh, or Final Destiny of the Gods, uh, is how it roughly translates. It really is um, just the meaning of the word. It doesn't have a literal translation, so to speak. It is the final apocalypse that is alluded to in Voluspa. Um, it is described in Voluspa, pr principally, although we are also getting some information on it from a few of the other um, sources, including uh, Have a Mall and uh, Bathruthness Mall. Uh, today we are going to be discussing mainly how it is described in Snorri's Prose Edda. So some of the things I'm going to want you to know is where is it described, what events precede it, who are the major actors in it, what happens during Ragnarok, and what events follow it. If you know those things, then you pretty much have got Ragnarok. So if you'll just listen to me, I'm going to read you the key segments the key parts of it from the prose edda. So if you could just sit back and listen. Then said Gangleri, what tidings are to be told concerning Ragnarok? Never before have I heard aught said of this. Har answered, great tidings are to be told of it, and much. The first is this, that there shall come that winter which is called the Fimble Winter. In that time, snow shall drive from all quarters. Frosts shall be great then, and winds sharp. There shall be no virtue in the sun. Those winters shall proceed three in succession, and no summer between. But first shall come three other winters, such that over all the world there shall be mighty battles, in that time brothers shall slay each other for greed's sake, and none shall spare father or son in manslaughter and in incest. So it says in Voluspa, Brothers shall strive and slaughter each other. Own sister's children shall sin together. Ill days among men, many a whoredom, an axe age, a sword age, shields shall be cloven, a wind age, a wolf age, ere the world totters. Then shall happen what seems great tidings. The wolf shall swallow the sun, and this shall seem to men a great harm. Then the other wolf shall seize the moon, and he also shall work great ruin. The stars shall vanish from the heavens. Then shall come to pass these tidings also. All the earth shall tremble so, and the crags, that trees shall be torn up from the earth, and the crags fall to ruin, and all fetters and bonds shall be broken and rent. Then shall Fenris wolf get loose, then the sea shall gush forth upon the land, because the Midgard serpent stirs in giant wrath and advances up onto the land. Then that too shall happen, that Nalfar shall be loosened, the ship which is so named. Hrimur is the name of the giant who steers Nalfar, Fenris wolf shall advance with gaping mouth, and his lower jaw shall be against the earth, but the upper against heaven. He would gape yet more if there were room for it. Fires blaze from his eyes and nostrils. The Midgard serpent shall blow venom so that he shall sprinkle all the air and water, and he is very terrible and shall be on one side of the wolf. In this din shall the heaven be cloven, and the sons of Muspel ride hence. 
Sertra shall ride first, and both before him and after him burning fire. His sword is exceeding good, for its radiance shines brighter than the sun. When they ride over Bifrost, then the bridge shall break, as has been told before. The sons of Muspel shall go forth to that field which is called Vigrid. Thither shall come Fenris also, and the Midgard serpent. Then Loki and Hrimmer shall come there also, and with him all the frost giants. All the champions of Hel follow Loki, and the sons of Muspel shall have a company by themselves, and it shall be very bright. The field of Vigrid is a hundred leagues wide each way. Now most of these characters you know, but let me go back a little bit and address the sons of Muspel. Who are these sons of Muspel? Possibly the sons of Sertra. Minimally, they are the residents of Muspelheim, whom Sertra seems to rule over thus possibly other fire giants. To recap, Ragnarok is preceded by the Fimble Winter and a breakdown in social order. The Fenris wolf breaks his fetters and begins swallowing up the land. The Midgard Serpent comes ashore and spews venom everywhere. Sertra shall ride with the sons of Muspel across Bifrost, breaking it. The ship Nalfar shall be brought forth by Hrim. Loki shall come forth with the frost giants and the champions of hell. And finally, the battle shall take place at Vigrid. And now let's discuss what happens during Ragnarok, how the gods respond. 51. The High One reveals the events of Ragnarok. When these tidings come to pass, then shall Heimdall rise up and blow mightily in the Gjallarhorn, and awaken all the gods, and they shall hold counsel together. Then Odin shall ride to Mimir's well, and take counsel of Mimir for himself and his host. Then the ash of Yggdrasil shall tremble, and nothing then shall be without fear in heaven or in earth. Then shall the Aesir put on their armor, and all the champions, and advance to the field. Odin rides first with the gold helmet and his spear, which is called Gunganir. He shall go first forth against Fenris' wolf, and Thor stands forward on his other side, and can be of no help to him, because he shall have his hands full to fight against the Midgard serpent. Freyr shall contend with Surt, and a hard encounter shall there be between them before Frey falls. It is to be his death that he lacks that good sword of his that he gave to Skirnir. Then shall the dog Garm be loosened, which is bound before Gnipa's cave. He shall do battle with Tyr, and each shall become the other's slayer. Thor shall put to death the Midgard serpent, and shall stride away nine paces from that spot. Then shall he fall dead to the earth, because of the venom which the snake has blown at him. The wolf shall swallow Odin, that shall be his ending. But straight thereafter shall Vidar stride forth, and set one foot upon the lower jaw of the wolf, 
With one hand he shall seize the wolf's upper jaw and tear his gullet asunder, and that is the death of the wolf. Loki shall have battle with Heimdall, and each be the slayer of the other. Then straightway shall Surt cast fire over the earth and burn all the world. To recap, Odin faces the Fenris wolf and is swallowed by it. Vidar avenges his father, Odin, by tearing out the wolf's gullet. Thor faces the Midgard serpent, but succumbs to its venom. Finally, Frey is killed by Surt, for Frey is without his sword. Do you remember why Frey is without his sword? If not, reread the story of Frey and Skirnir. Loki and Heimdall face off and kill each other. And Ragnarok concludes with Surt casting fire over the earth and burning all the world. What happens after Ragnarok? 53. The High One describes the rebirth of the world. Then spake Gangleri, Shall any of the gods live then, or shall there be any then, any earth or heaven? Har answered, In that time the earth shall emerge out of the sea, and shall then be green and fair. Then shall the fruits of it be brought forth unsown. Vidar and Vali shall be living, inasmuch as neither sea nor the fire of Surt shall have harmed them and they shall dwell at Idaval, where Asgard was before. And then the sons of Thor, Modi, and Magni shall come there, and they shall have Mjolnir there. After that, Baldur shall come thither, and Hod from Hel. Then all shall sit down together and hold speech with one another, and call to mind their secret wisdom, and speak of those happenings which have been before, of the Midgard serpent and of Fenris wolf. Then they shall find in the grass those golden pieces which the Aesir had had. Pardon my typo there. In the place called Hodmir's Holt, there shall lie hidden during the fire of Surt two of mankind, who are called thus, Leaf and Leaf Thrasir. And for food they shall have the morning dews. From these folk shall come so numerous an offspring that all the world shall be peopled. And it may seem wonderful to thee that the son shall have borne a daughter, not less fair than herself, and the daughter shall then tread in the steps of her mother, as it is said here, Then Alfredul shall bear a daughter, ere Fenris drags her forth. That maid shall go, when the great gods die, to ride her mother's road. To recap, after Ragnarok, green earth shall emerge from the sea. Odin's sons, Vidar and Vali, survive. Thor's sons, Modi and Magni, survive and have Mjolnir. Baldur and Hod escape hell, are resurrected, and survive. Two other survivors, Leif and Leif Thrasir, shall repopulate the earth. The son, Alfredul, shall have a daughter that takes her place.
some things to think about, and then we'll be done. Is there any way to stop Ragnarok from happening? It seems like the theme of some of what we have read before was the gods trying to stop Ragnarok from happening. After all, the gods tie up the Fenris wolf. They make his fetters, his leader, and so forth, an unbreakable bond to try to keep him in one place. This could be answering our second question, how do the gods' own actions bring it about? By tying Loki up, perhaps after he kills Balder, or after he has Hod kill Balder? They treat him very poorly. By tying up the Fenris wolf. By killing Loki's children and using the child's entrails to tie up their father. These things in part probably bring about Ragnarok, at least in their own way. Perhaps there is no way to stop it. From a literary standpoint, it's interesting to question whether Ragnarok is a prophecy or it has already occurred. The text seems fairly clear that, at least in the prose edda, that it seems to have already happened. But Veluspa reads much more like a prophecy. It'd be interesting for you to take Veluspa and reread the sections on Ragnarok. I read from the prose edda, Ragnar but rather Voluspa reads much more like a prophecy that, that has occurred or that will occur. That's all I have to say about Ragnarok right now, at least on this recording. Now you know what there is to know about Ragnarok.